Welcome to chapter five, where we're going to discuss the final third pillar of adherence, and that is flexibility. Now, importantly, flexibility has a unique role. Its role is to ensure that your training stays not only realistic, but also enjoyable. Flexibility is what supports the other two pillars. Because honestly, you have to expect one thing out of life, that it will be unexpected. Truly, there are many things in life that are outside of our control, and what was once something we enjoyed, what was once realistic, might become not enjoyable or not very realistic as life changes. So being able to be adaptable is what this chapter is all about, and it's an important aspect of good programming to ensure that you can stick with your plan in the long run. Because if you stick with it long enough, almost any plan will succeed. But a rigid plan that was the best plan possible that you could make in the past is eventually doomed to fail as your life circumstances change. Whether it's work, whether it's family, whether it's unexpected life events, ultimately, you will have something challenge your current plan, and you need to be able to react to that in a way that's actually conducive to your long-term goals. Something we tell our clients all the time is that life doesn't stop for training, or life doesn't stop for bodybuilding. A bodybuilder's instinct is often to get even more rigid in the face of unexpected troubles. But that doesn't acknowledge the fact that there are many things outside of our control. It's not simply training plus nutrition equals results. It's training plus nutrition in the face of the curveballs that life throws you is what equals results. And by making your training plan or your life even more rigid, by avoiding social events, by adjusting your work schedule, by changing the way you eat or the way you train to be even more and more structured and more rigid, that's actually going to get you in hot water when that no longer becomes possible. And that natural instinct of looking to wrest control out of an uncontrolled world is not going to be the solution to your problems. Rather, finding ways where you can build in flexibility to your plans that you can adapt to these curveballs that are thrown at you, that is the pathway to long-term success. So ultimately, it is a stressful thing to acknowledge that there are things outside of our control. But the first step towards actually being able to circumvent these curveballs that life throws you is acknowledging that and saying, okay, well, I want to have a plan in place so that when things do happen that are unexpected, I have the ability to adapt to it. With flexibility, you can adapt to these things. And rather than quitting or burning out from trying to follow something rigidly that is simply no longer realistic, leading to poor enjoyment, leading to poor results, poor effort, and eventually simply falling off the wagon completely. So it's important to not underestimate the impact of stress. Sometimes in the evidence-based community and the bodybuilding sector that we all love, we focus a lot on the physiology. We focus a lot on the interesting nutritional biochemistry or the function of different aspects of muscle physiology, anatomy. All these things are really interesting. I love them. I study them. But ultimately, what truly matters is our psychology. Because if we don't find meaning in what we do, if we don't find passion, that will motivate us to work hard to get the outcome we want, regardless of what the physiology may suggest could be optimal. So as I mentioned, unfortunately, training results is not just the simple equation of training plus nutrition plus recovery equals gains. We have to acknowledge what we call the biopsychosocial model which means that our perception of the world and our psychological disposition and our environment also interacts with these other three variables to determine what happens. So not everything is within our control, and like I said, acknowledging that is the first step. And once we acknowledge that not everything is within our control, then we can do something about it. And just to show that this is actually the case, that the stress we experience has real effects on the outcomes we receive, Consider this study by Bartholomew and colleagues that was a study of individuals in a university taking a weight training class. Now, what they did was they gave all these individuals a survey, and they asked them about the perceived negative life stresses that they were having. And those who had higher stresses actually got poorer gains in the squat and the bench press compared to their lower stress counterparts who made better gains in their strength for the squat and the bench press. So what this implies is that if you had the same exact program that was perfect on paper, or at least the best for your situation it could be, but your situation was higher stress versus lower stress, that same program would be better when your stress was more well-managed. So this is proof that we don't simply have an equation where we can add up our training volume, add up our surplus, add up our eight hours of sleep every night and have very predictable gains. Life is unpredictable, and therefore our gains are somewhat unpredictable. The question is, 
What do we do when we have these periods of high stress? What do we do when life throws us a curveball? Because we can't control the fact that curveballs are thrown, but we can control how we react to it. So we acknowledge the fact that we can't control everything, and then we decide that we need to make programs that have adaptability built in. And this is where auto-regulation comes into play. Auto-regulation is the systematic process of designing programs that have built-in flexibility to deal with these periods and hopefully result in either better gains or better adherence. And in fact, that's exactly what the data shows. In another study of university college weight training students, McNamara and Stern in 2010 specifically used a flexible daily undulating programming model compared to an inflexible one that was rigid. The only difference between these two programs was that one group was allowed to rate their energy levels on a day-to-day basis and then choose a lighter, moderate, or heavier training day based upon how they felt, so long as they eventually completed all the sessions. However, the other group had to complete this training in a predetermined order. Interestingly enough, by the end of the study, the group that had the flexible undulating program made better leg press gains. So here's an example where strength gains were actually better because someone considered how they felt on a day-to-day basis and made proper choices based upon their energy and how they trained. But sometimes it may not even affect your immediate outcome today, but perhaps your long-term adherence. And that was exactly what Calhoun and colleagues found in 2017 in their study of trained individuals following a daily undulating programming model where one group had to follow the fixed order on a week-to-week basis of hypertrophy, power, and then strength. However, the other group got to choose on a day-to-day basis which of those three they wanted to do based upon their perceived readiness. While there was no significant difference in terms of strength or body composition between these groups, the group that got to choose the order on a week-to-week basis of these daily sessions had better adherence, meaning that if you have a flexible program, It might actually just simply make you stronger as you have the ability to deal with the day-to-day stresses that you encounter. Or maybe not, but at the very least, it'll keep you in the gym. It'll prevent you from burning out or dropping out, and that will benefit you in the long run. So first, acknowledge that there are curveballs that life will throw us. There are things in life we cannot control. But how we react to those things is what's important, and doing so with a flexible program can enhance your gains and your adherence.